Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Monday, February 12th, 2024. And our top story today, meet your new team member, Generative AI. And joining me now to help break it all down, Jen Maraska and Katie Blazy are with GenPact. Katie, Jen, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank, Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's great to see you. And we're going to be talking about a really important topic. It's a it's a current event top event topic, artificial intelligence. And and Jen, the the title of the white paper: Meet your new te- team member, uh, generative AI. Uh, yes. Tell us about how does artificial intelligence fit into the the employer and employee of the future. Oh, well, uh, I think it's going to be the new integral part of the employment of the future, and I think that. And actually, we're seeing it today. So I know that companies are developing strategies around how they can use generative AI in their organization, in their strategy, in their value um, realization and out to their customers. And so there's so much to think about as they transition their strategy to integrate this amazing and ever-changing technology um, into their environments. And and Kate, I mean, this is like, you know, you think about uh, you know, I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but you think about the people think about the, ter- the Terminator, right? And and uh, self awareness, and you know uh, that whole, that whole story. This is not that. I mean, this is people are familiar with Chat GPT. I think people are testing it out. How how does AI get put made part of an organization? I mean, where does it where does it fit in? We've got chat bots and different types of things that people are using today, but it but it's a lot deeper than that. It is, and I think uh, it can speak to many different avenues within a company. So we can look at it certainly from the end user, the customer's perspective. How can we enhance our ability to communicate with them, uh, create a much richer experience? Uh, One of the clients that we worked with um, worked very diligently on that, um, implementing it in their digital experience when they're talking with customers, um, and not only answering questions, but also listening to how they're responding um, different ways to upsell and cross-sell some of their services. And they've experienced an uptick in both customer satisfaction and sales because of that. And I think from the employee side of it, there's many different ways that you're going to see this implemented, one of which is around data and analytics. So how are we looking at the data? What data do we have access to? How are we divvying out that data and deciding what pieces of it are going to be relevant to the business question that we're asking? And then creating the analysis that comes out of that, generating the output from the Gen AI, and then looking at it from a critical lens and saying, is this valid? Um, Is it ethical? Are we using it correctly? Does this make sense for the business Then the question that we're trying to answer? And then being able to confidently take that information to leadership once the analysis is done, and then leadership can make better data-driven decisions rather than based on a feeling or, you know, just instinct. Yeah, no no more gut instinct, Jen. I mean, you, you have a lot of data that you can kind of sift through and do it through this generative AI. But when you talk to clients or even prospects, do you get a sense of fear, overwhelmingness, anxiety? How do they how do they feel about this? Because in some ways, you could be maybe replacing your yourself or a function of what you're doing. So, what, what's the general feeling among many different types of many employers? I think uh, I think it matches the change curve that we talk a lot about. Of you start with kind of your fear and your anxiety, but I think as you learn more the ability to find those principles of how you want to use Gen AI and how it applies in your business help to make that um, easier and make that change and adoption easier for the organization. So as you're thinking about trust in data, how do you create platforms within an organization to build the trust in the data that's coming out? How do you actually inform your employee base that as we implement Gen AI, you're going to get to spend more time in customers. We're going to redistribute what is sometimes tactical day-to-day work to allow you to actually take on more strategic work in the organization. So we're not going to, we're going to replace some of your job duties, but we may not replace you as an individual. And so I think that as people start to get past that curve, and then as you think about the growth that this enables for an organization that, as Kate was mentioning, your sales growth, you know, within sales and commercial, 
um, your ability to have a more efficient supply chain, you're creating opportunities for employee employees that you hadn't in the past, or you're creating that opportunity for the customer that you haven't in the past. So a retailer in a store might have more time to spend with a customer on customer service than actually doing a cycle count in the store. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to redistribute that work, but there's a lot of discussion, change management, engagement that's going to go along with make people feel comfortable that this is kind of the new evolution of how work um, gets done and how value is created at the organization. And I think that's a really great point. And one of the things that goes on top of that is as you're telling the story, you're creating that vision, the case for change across the organization, and you're sharing that journey of what's going to be happening. It's how do I create a positive impact here? How do I create some positivity and decrease some of the fear that we've seen? Um, and one of the ways we can do that is by talking about capacity creation. So this is truly going to be a co-pilot. This can't run on its own. Um, it can do the research faster. It can go out and grab the data more, more quickly, but it's not going to replace the fuzzy logic, so to speak, which is an old term, but it's still true in terms of, I need to make sure that this makes sense. You know, it's the judgment factor. And by doing that, we're giving humans a, a, an ability to get rid of some of those more admin type tasks. It's the research, it's the going out and finding the information versus I can now take that information, digest it much more quickly because there's some analysis that's been done. And then when I go and talk to my clients, the conversation is richer because I know more. I've been able to have something, you know, do that information, research that information for me so that when I'm talking to you, I know a lot more. I know kind of what you're thinking. I can think about, you know, what you've looked at in the past. There's so many different avenues to look at from a big data standpoint that can make your customer interactions from the human side much more rich. Um, I also think that it's going to make that human interaction more critical, more important, because there may be less of them. So how do we make those moments matter? How do we make them count more? And I think that's another place where employees can start to see the opportunities rather than just the fear and probably some misinterpretation about it. Really good point. And, and Jen, Kate, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about getting started with that transition. If you're an employer, what do you need to know? You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Well, Jen, Kate, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a really fun conversation. And, and I think we're dispelling, as we go, a lot of the myths. I mean, you read in the popular press that it's just the end of the world and people are not going to have jobs. Um, Kate, let's talk about for those employers out there, and, and they, they range from size to the Fortune 100, Fortune 500, to uh, small employers are all thinking about artificial intelligence. Where do you start with change management to get to the place where you implement generative AI as a, a part of your organization? 
I think part of it is understanding your culture. So what works well for your organization and also for the people who are buying your services and your products? Um, having that understanding will help you to determine what's the best way to introduce this. Also understanding where are you going to get the biggest bang for your buck? So if I had to look at my organization and say, what makes the most sense from an implementation standpoint? Where should I start? Do I need to start small and maybe pilot it, do something more internal first? Um, is that going to work best for my culture so that they can get really comfortable with the technology? Or should I go for the big bang and say, you know what, I want to introduce this as a new interaction uh, method for my, my customers and start implementing it there and kind of let people learn about it as they're going, um, have a learning experience for both the client and for the employee. I think it all depends really on what's going to work best for you. Um, and start with your leaders. Uh, you should know your leaders and, and understand who's going to embrace this versus who's going to resist. And getting the perspective of both of those uh, groups is going to be vital because you're going to see those who are, you know, really bought into this and really want to see it, you know, be implemented, probably going with the big bang. And then you're going to see people who are going to take a bit more of a conservative approach and say, uh, I don't know, you know, I saw that movie, I Robot. I'm a little bit worried about what this means and how it's going to, you know, come in and play a big role. Um, what is it going to make redundant? Is it going to make me redundant? You know, how are we going to adjust to this type of technology? And as Jen said, something that's evolving all of the time and so quickly. Uh, so I think that would be my starting place. Yeah. And Jen, I want to come back to you. And I, I love the uh, allusion to I Robot. I love that movie. Will Smith was great. Bridget Moynihan, it was a good story and it actually ended up pretty, pretty well as well. Jan, I want to come to you because are there certain industries as you're talking to clients and I'm thinking about not only the private sector, but I'm thinking about tax exempt and also government. I, I could see how all this could make all of these uh, parts of the economy better. So are there specific parts of the economy that you have seen that are more interested than others in implementing this? I think... Um... You're going to see, it's actually interesting because if you look at when Gen AI first started, you saw some of the investment companies and the financial institutions actually slow play a little bit of the ability to bring Gen AI in because they wanted to be a more of a fast follower. However, now that they see the value of it and the ability to you know, run risk models, look at data in a faster and more effective way for their investment um, employees and their customers, uh, they're starting to ramp up. I think the first you saw out of the gate, your retail, your CPG, they have lots of data. They have lots of product data. So to Kate's point of start small and find those ways in which you can impact your customers and your employers early out of the gate, they were definitely leading the pack and you know had more autonomy to take those risks and how that was used um, across industry. But I will say every industry now, I think um, and I know sees the value of how this can play into their organization and the strategies they develop around it. And I know some retailers we work with are actually defining what are those principles? So what are the ethics that we have to define around Gen AI? What is the trust factor we have to build around Gen AI? How do we reduce risk for any sort of plagiarism that might come up if we use Gen AI? And so you're starting to see strategies around that in every organization and in every industry, and it's um, not one versus the other anymore. Yeah, and, and Kate, um, you, you talked a lot about the data, or you and Jen have talked a lot about the data. Uh, if you're a manager, how do you prepare yourself as part of this change for the quicker pace of data coming at you? I know that when my wife gives me lots of things to do, I, it just goes in one ear, hard for me to process. Uh, maybe, that's just, maybe that's just me, I just made, maybe the male brain, but how do we, in all seriousness, as a manager getting this data, how do I prep myself to receive it and act upon it uh, as fast as it's coming in. And I think uh, the first thing you want to do is really understand what that data strategy is going to be. Where am I collecting this data from? Is it internal? Is it external? How trusted is the source? And then what am I doing with that data? What questions am I trying to answer and help my leadership to determine what decisions they need to make based on that data? And then understanding, okay, so I, I understand the data now. So what am I going to do to get the information out of the Gen AI bot? Is it going to be that, you know, how, how am I engineering those questions? And it's called prompt engineering. So how am I learning that? So another thing I might want to think about is, you know, from my standpoint and from my employees is how am I teaching them? 
what tools am I providing them to make them successful in terms of using this and to make them feel comfortable with using this technology and then the output that's being driven from it? So I think I would start with the data and then think about the upskilling, reskilling that needs to be done. And and Jen, words out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and Jen, I want to come to you to kind of tie it off, and I don't want to leave out the employee. Uh, you know, again, a lot of doom and gloom if you read the popular press about AI. I think, I think we've dispelled a lot of that. And I think it continues to be dispelled as people experience it. Uh, but what can I do as an employee, uh, whether you're rank and file, regular, just, you know, maybe you're on a manufacturing line or maybe you're middle management. Uh, what can you do to prepare yourself uh, for the use of G generative AI, knowing that the employer is going to do some training, but there's always things you can do to, to get yourself ready. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of free um, open gen AI out there. And I know, um, my children probably have learned it faster than most adults out there because they want to practice it for their high school essay or they want to <laughs> use it to solve a math problem. Um, so I just encourage everyone, you know, regardless of, you know, level in the organization to go out there and try it. The chat GPT engine is changing every couple months. I think we're on chat GPT 4.2. So how can you, you know, for $20 in one month, you can learn a lot and just trial and error. In the work environment though, I would say, you know, take a deep breath and understand what the outcome is that your leadership is trying to achieve and actually what the benefit it is for you to expand your role and ask for that. Ask for now that I have more data, now that I can commit more time to customers, now that I can commit more time to providing service to, if you're an internal employee, how can I do my job better with the data I have and really capitalize on that. And Kate brought up the learning and Kate, I was going to actually add on there's a continuous learning aspect of this. So Jeff, your question is spot on. We have to continue to learn. This is changing. It used to be, I think every six months technology changed. I would say it's every two weeks now. So we have to be in, in a forever uh, continuous learning mindset. Yeah, well, we've come a long way since I started learning Lotus 1, 2, 3 in DOS on my 286. So it is, it is, it is, it is uh, pretty amazing. Jen, Kate, we're gonna have to leave it there. Great to see you, thanks for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank, Thank you, you John. John. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. Hey, we're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRNAM. We have a very special guest and another important topic. You're not going to want to miss it. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts, so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.